Okay, here we go. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone, to today's webinar entitled 3P Product Design, Innovating with Lean Tools. I'm Scott Shive, Director of Marketing and Communications for AME, and I will be your moderator today. Today's presenter is Ken Rolfes, President of KDR Associates. Ken is a longtime AME volunteer, three-time AME Regional President, and two-time member of our Board of Directors. I will let Ken introduce himself further at the beginning of the webinar. Before we start, just a couple of housekeeping items. You'll be in listen-only mode throughout the webinar. You will see that you are muted on your attendee panel on the right side of your screen. And if you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into your question area in the attendee panel and click on Submit. We will review the questions at the end of today's presentation and answer as many as we can. And when you log off today, please check your email inbox. It will, and it will be an invitation and link to fill out a short webinar attendee survey. And please take a few minutes to complete the survey today as your feedback is very important. And if you do it today, you won't receive a second and third invitation from us asking you to complete the survey. Ken has graciously agreed to provide a PDF of his presentation to all of today's attendees, and we'll be sending that out along with a recorded link for the webinar replay to each of you within 48 hours. So without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce Ken Rolfes, who will present 3P product design, innovating with lean tools. Take it away, Ken. Well, thank you, Scott, and uh, welcome, everybody. I'm glad to have all, all you folks uh, join us here today uh, as we kind of enter the uncertain world of product development here. And so what we're going to cover here is a little bit of uh, about uh, uh, the uh, squeeze machine project that we've been using as a model uh, for, for product development and the lean tools that we're employing uh, to carry this project forward. Uh, first of all, a little bit of background. Uh, Scott said, you know, I've been a long-time AME volunteer. I've uh, been in operations for over 35 years. Uh, I've led product development uh, for almost 20 years, and primarily in the industries of electronics and, and medical devices, uh, if you will. Currently, uh, with KDR Associates, I work with companies large and small, some you probably recognize here. Uh, to get greater value in their improvement efforts, and uh, which includes their uh, product development uh, process. And so my objective today in this uh, webinar is to illustrate how uh, lean tools applied to product development can accelerate and, and uh, uh, contribute to uh, success. So a right, little overview of what we'll be covering today is we'll have a little bit of a background, uh, uh, cover a little bit of the background. We'll take you through our project status and what our results are so far today, uh, to date, uh, the methodology that we're following, and some of our learnings as we as we wrap uh, wrap this up. So that's kind of the kind of the pace of what we'll cover here. So let's take a little bit of step back, a little bit of a background here. Uh, and this this is a chart here, and, and you can probably dig some of the statistics up yourself. If you look at and you Google uh, product development success, uh, you get a gazillion different surveys and, and such, and they all kind of come into the same thing. It tells you we got some real opportunity for improvement. Now, if you look at these charts here, it ranges between uh, a third to two thirds of the products fail. Uh, are considered failures uh, in the marketplace, uh, and somewhere between half and uh, uh, quite a bit of number of them have innovations fail their, to return their cost of capital. So we think there's a, and this is what's really motivating us here at, at AME, is to really look at how lean tools can, can uh, help us uh, uh, improve our success rate in product development. So the, here's how we're looking at this: is um, in product development, we're looking we're looking at the squeeze machine as the model to carry forward to do this. Now, the squeeze machine, for those that are not uh, familiar with it, is a Temple Grandin's design uh, for uh, basically giving a, uh, an individual a hug when they need it uh, to 
uh, uh, reduce anxiety. And uh, in autistic people, they, uh, uh, they, when they're touched by other people, it raises their anxiety level. And unfortunately, a hug would help them reduce uh, their anxiety. So she designed this squeeze machine uh, something like 25 or so years ago. And it works. And it, it really gives, uh, it calms uh, people down. And so we embarked upon uh, a program here to use the squeeze machine as a model uh, for product development. And so if we look at product development, uh, it's really kind of two pursuits. Uh, one is uh, really it's knowledge a knowledge generation process in which uh, we're going through uh, various different iterations of uh, uh, learning, experimenting, uh, testing, hypothesis, and generating knowledge and filling knowledge gaps. And the output of this, of it, is really knowledge which is represented in the recipe. So for example, if we're going to bake a cake, um, uh, you need to under, know what your ingredients are or your bill of materials. You need to know your proportions. You need to know your processing and such. And so uh, that knowledge is represented uh, as by the output of what your product development process is given. So that's the you know one pursuit. The other pursuit is we want to create products that customers uh, actually want. And that's what we understand is to be uh, pretty challenging. So th this is our project. Our project is, uh, as we look at, look at this, we laid it out uh, once we got permission from uh, uh, Temple Grandin to pursue. Uh, we laid out the project is, first of all, understanding the customers, uh, customers and using the voice of the customer event uh, to do that. Moving into an ideation and design uh, activity, which we uh, called our, th our 3P. Uh, prototype demonstration is an out as a follow-on and into validation. And where we're at at this point in time is we're in the uh, validation uh, phase at, at this point. So I'd, over on the right, you see we had uh, teams uh, for the events here. Uh, one event was the voice of the customer uh, team. We had look it looks like I think we had about uh, 14 or so people on that. Our 3P design team, we had about uh, 22 people in that, which included uh, users and, and clinicians and the manufacturer and AME members. So what we've accomplished uh, so far uh, is uh, we identified and addressed uh, some of the voice of the customer targets uh, there. Uh, we went through when we were looking at the designs, we created 17 different design ideas actually built three alternate models and selected one to prototype, which is this here. It looks like a chair from the space shuttle. Um, I'll show you what the real one looks like here shortly. Uh, once we had identified the one, the prototype, we outlined the manufacturing process uh, and what you see here and estimated the, uh, the cost and the sell price. And our objective was is to bring the cost down. The temple was concerned that the cost had risen uh, quite a bit over the years. And she was looking at, uh, so we set a target of reducing it by 50%. Uh, uh, and we think that, uh, uh, think that what we have here does, does achieve that goal. Uh, we also scoped the uh, uh, product uh, development plan uh, that, to take us out. And, and what we used here is those of you that recognize it will probably recognize that this is an A3 format. We use the A3 uh, tool to help us uh, keep us focused all the way through the project. And interestingly enough, as we go through it, I would send this to Temple Grandin, and Temple would look, look at it and such. And she really appreciated this. Never told her it was an A3. She just liked the format. She says, I like how crisp this is. It gives me a, a, a good status thing and I don't have a lot of paperwork to read. So she, said she really liked it. So, so this is the new design. Uh, once we took that, uh, the manufacturer uh, built the prototype and what you see here on the uh, left, uh, the people there, this was our user uh, group. We have 
an individual that's autistic that uses the squeeze machine. We have autistic research uh, uh, people and clinicians that uh, that were participate. All four of these people participated in the voice of the customer in the 3P design. And in fact, it was really kind of fun. Uh, uh, the, the woman sitting in the uh, chair was um, uh, is a head, was a research now retired for autism research. Uh, she uh, uh, she said, "Well, can I uh, can I build things?" I said, "Of course." She says, "I'm I'm a certified welder," and so so you find out a lot about a lot about the capabilities of people when you give them a chance to uh, to do things. Well, our next step, our next step is the, the original, while it works, it's mostly empirical. We have a University of Louisville Medical Center that's going to do a baseline uh, for the original squeeze machine. We want to build some additional prototypes and conduct comparative clinical comparisons. And so for those of you that are in the uh, medical industry, you recognize that the clinical, you know, we now go into slow mode when, uh, when you uh, get into the clinical uh, clinical studies. So let's take a step back now and say, what do we got here? You know, what is 3P? Uh, 3P is the production preparation process. And if we come back to our definition of product development, if product development is doing two things, it's creating knowledge, uh, and it's creating our production system, and it's also creating a product that people really want. What we're trying to do here is do this in, in a collaborative, uh, uh, concurrent process of product design and, and process design uh, at, at the same time. And what we found here, what we found here, and in my experience, has been as we get uh, both the product and the process improve, and the time uh, to market uh, improves. Now this is a process that was uh, kind of introduced to the U.S. Uh, somewhere in the mid '80s. Uh, I got involved in, in using this, uh, started using this in the early '90s, um, and found it to be a fairly powerful, uh, powerful process here. The uh, objectives here are is to really balance three things: is the you know is really address the human needs for these products. I mean, we're not talking about you know, internet app here, what we're really talking about is products that people use each day. So we look at, you know, the, how the human uh, needs are and how, the, how we interact with that and, and do we have a desirable product. Is it technologically feasible to actually do this and do we have the technology and then is it viable for the business, uh, do the business have the capabilities to do it. So we're trying to balance that and, you know, get us as you know, try to operate in this sweet spot right, right here in the in the middle as best we can. And what's interesting about this, or what's important about this, is that we're not we're moving the development process out of the back, uh, out of the back uh, labs and and such, out into the front and creating a collaborative environment for idea exchange and development with a wide range of stakeholders, which you'll see uh, here later on. Now the process, and the process that we followed in this project, uh, really if you look at this, doesn't look like any other uh, 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 product development project. You know, at, you know, as we defined the challenge, we looked at it, uh, we had to keep ourselves fairly focused because there's quite a wide range of uh, opportunities for various different products uh, to uh, do what, what the squeeze machine does in different venues in different ways, such as uh, vests that you can wear and that sort of thing. What we wanted to do is focus on the challenge, the uh, product that would be used in a clinic or in a home. We went to create our team and we went and we looked at the, uh, 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 the manufacturer, uh, the user, user community, and AME members and we wanted to bring uh, a broad enough spectrum in into this so that we had uh, different contexts and views for the design. Then we had to really understand the user. You know, many of us, including myself, really uh, were not 
knowledgeable enough to really talk about uh, what the user really wants. And so we had to go through, and that was our voice of the customer event. And then out of that, we wanted to get into some ideation and design and such, and we did the did that in the uh, 3P event, and it's still still occurring, if you will. Okay, and then obviously we'd like to move it towards implementation. Well, I'd like for you to look at this uh, these processes you know, a little differently. Is I think we instead of simply looking at this thing in a uh, orderly sequence of steps and or phases and such, I like to look at it as really in terms of three different phases. First of all, inspiration. You know what motivates us to go uh, solve the problem and create the understanding, which really kind of covers a number of areas and it overlaps somewhat with uh, with the ideation. Okay, and the ideation is where we actually create, uh, uh, go into some creative problem solving, do some experimentation, we do some building, measuring, learning, adjusting, changing, and so we're going through those iterations. And then the implementation is where we take it from the project stage into people's lives. What I'd like for you to look at this and the, the approach that we're looking at here is that this is kind of a combination of divergent and convergent thinking. And it's important, I think, uh, for us to know where we are in the process to determine whether are we uh, at a point where we should be diverging or should, are we at a point where we should be uh, converging our thinking. Well, first of all, is starting out uh, when we're defining the challenge, we want to make sure that we're not trying to cover the whole landscape here, but what we're trying to do is define the challenge clear enough and simple enough that we can put our arms around it and, 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 and work it. And so we focused on the product as it's used in the clinic or in, or in a home. Then what we wanted to create a team is we wanted to do some divergent thinking because we wanted to have a diverse group of people uh, uh, to address this, because that's where the you know the ideas come from. People looking at things from different contexts, and then as we went to understand the user again, we're going to really kind of focus down to understand what that user uh, activity is. Obviously, then when we go into ideation, we want to really diverge and look at lots of opportunities, and then work our way down to converging to the product that we want to carry carry forward. So that's kind of the nature of the process. So when did you want to, if you want to use 3P and when do you want to use it? Well, there's a number of triggers that you see here, here on that, but you can use 3P throughout your product life cycle uh, and such. But I would say um, your best return for, for your investment is, is when you're doing it upfront. When you've got a new product design, or if you've got a new uh, uh, process or line that you're developing that you, wanna, that you want to implement, or if you have a new facility. Um, we've done a number of, of facility designs with 3P. Uh, the healthcare community has done a lot in, 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 in facility design. Uh, so when, if you're upfront, that's where you get your best, uh, uh, best return on investment. So in starting out your 3P effort, you want to focus your efforts. You want to understand where, at where you're at and what level and what the scope is. Uh, you could think, for example, uh, if, uh, you, if you look at uh, the lower picture on the right, um, on, no, the left, excuse me, um, <clears throat> your other right, that is. Anyway. Uh, if you could think about it, if the, the Higgs boson par particle that uh, was, I guess, demonstrated a, uh, about a year and a half to two years ago, could it be a, a, uh, a 3P experiment? About 45 or so years ago, the hypothesis in particle physics said that this particle had to exist. And so they had to pay, you know, spend billions of dollars and build the the largest uh, particle accelerator uh, in, in the world to do it. But in effect, what we're really talking about here 
is kind of a 3P ex experiment. Now, obviously, we don't have 45 years and billions of dollars here. We, we want to do it on the cheap, if you will. But the fact is, is that's what 3P is, uh, is really all about. It's take a hypothesis, create a model, run a test and experiment to demonstrate and learn and learn from that. So we want to keep each 3P event scope clear and simple. We want to understand what we're, tr what we're trying to do, what are ex experiments uh, and, and things that we want to do. Now, the other part is, is that we're not talking, and when we do a 3P event, we're not talking about one event and that's the only time you ever, that it's ever done. If you're going to do a new product, you do more events as you drive down in, into the detail level. You could drive it down into uh, the, uh, the product level uh, for some uh, design application. You could do it into a factory level design or you could throw it all the way down to uh, a workstation design. You could do it to an item, de item design. So the important point here is, is that as you get better at, at using this, it becomes a, a way of a way of experimenting and getting and getting things done quickly. So let's let's uh, start uh, here and uh, the uh, principles of lean and product development. Uh, you know, lean might look a little bit different in product development, but the principles are pretty much uh, the same. We start with the customer interests. We start with understanding what the customers are doing, and the thing we have to recognize is that it's easy to kid ourselves that we really know what the customer wants. And, and <clears throat> what we have to recognize, it really has nothing to do with our capabilities. It really only is about what the customer is uh, doing, uh, what problems they're trying to solve, and the, what their experience is. And so what we want to do before we get into, the, into uh, design and experimentation is get out there with with the customer, uh, feel you know, walk in their shoes, feel what they feel, see what they see, touch what they touch, hear what they hear, uh, experience what they experience. And in our case here, we were dealing with a product that's used in a clinical environment. That being the case, we were limited to be able to do that. So we brought uh, the users and the, and the people into the manufacturer's uh, location so that we could experience it our, ourselves. We looked at this as, uh, and we look at this as, as an, an iterative process. It's not one conversation. It's a constant dialogue as we develop our rough concepts our, uh, and models and such. We're continuing to create um, conversation and dialogue with the customer to get feedback so that we can adjust, change, uh, and such. And I might note here is um, if any of you have uh, picked up the um, uh, book, uh, The Lean Startup uh, by Eric Reese, I guess it is, um, I, they, what you see is that they picked this uh, up uh, in the Lean Startup community uh, uh, in the last uh, couple years, you know, so this you know you can get some good background reading on it. It's a good good reference for you. So in our situation, the uh, the squeeze machine, this current squeeze machine works. Okay, it's, it was designed by Temple Grandin. As we looked at the uh, uh, looked at this and the requirements from the uh, from the customer, is that users control the initiation and does uh, duration of the squeeze it was really a very critical element of it, okay, and it's designed to reduce anxiety, is to help help them cal calm them down, and it works. Right. <clears throat> so we had a machine set up in our in our uh, in our program. We brought uh, our folks in. We said everyone took a turn. Uh, to get into the machine, we observed ever you know people using it. And what you see here is how it's being used. You see the person. If you look at the diagram on the and my pointer there, you see how the person is supposed to to be in the machine, what the correct position is. There is problems that a 
occur because if they don't get the right position. And what you see here is this is the nature of the machine. Okay, and we also has a over here. You see the pointer pointing. This is a, a, a compressor. It's uh, uh, that's used. It does make a little bit of noise. So we went through and did our kind of our discovery. Well, if you think about this, that it's uh, designed for anxiety reduction, and here you have uh, the, a person that's anxious coming coming into the clinic and 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 such. Uh, the first impression is rather important. And the user's first impression here we looked at is we said, well, I don't know what it looks like to you, but it looked to me like this is a, you know, possibly some sort of uh, torture machine. And one person said, hey, this is what it looks like to them. And <laughs> in fact, the uh, uh, clinicians, and some of them actually put a tarp over the machine so the visitors don't, don't see it and get the wrong in, in, impression. But it does work, and uh, that's what we wanted to improve. So we went through that understanding and such, and we cre created, and then we took the customer interests, uh, which were things like uh, that. We, the customer's interest was that it's safe, that it provides therapeutic pressure, it's consistent, it's durable, the user has control, and such. And we mapped that. We laid out the the product uh, here, as you can see in here, and we mapped. Each of the uh, each of the uh, customer interests to the product attributes or subsystems, um, so that you know, we really focused on what is the primary influence of those specific interests. From there, what we took each of the interests and we created this um, uh, uh, quad, you know, four quad. Uh, uh, area here in which we're trying to get uh, what we call knowledge briefs. Now remember at the voice of the customer stage we're not looking for design solutions. What we're looking for is understanding of the customers so that we can carry forward to the designer. So what we're looking at is facts about the customer is first of all why it's important to the customer, uh, what we've learned from observing from the customer's experience, uh, the conclusions that we have learned that the designer should know and says, hey, this, this is kind of a, a problematic, and what the new design should address and some actions we need to take before the design work, if, if, if any. Okay. So we created knowledge briefs around each one of the uh, customer interests, and that was help, and the purpose of that is to help us guide our design. So then we went through looking at opportunities for improvement. We, it wasn't hard to find. Uh, we had about 79 different opportunities for, for improvement. And then we uh, affinitized them and put them into the customer interest categories and created targets for uh, the design group uh, to work on. And it came down to these 11. Uh, and we had the, uh, the user group give us a one, two, three priority uh, for, for, these, um, you know, for these targets here. Interestingly enough, I would have expected cost to be, uh, a, um, cost to be higher up on the scale, uh, but um, it, it actually ended up being the, uh, the, the last one on there. At any rate, what we did is, is set targets for the, the design group. So then we went into uh, some little time later, uh, did a 3P event, and uh, uh, well, I would and I would recommend that, that you do separate the voice of the customer event activity from the uh, 3P event, so that you because sometimes you need to go out and get additional uh, data and information so that you have what have uh, have what you need to be able to you know have an effective 3P event. The 3P event is a structured event, as you see here, and it's designed to converge from a, a large a number of opportunities and such and bring us down into the concept that we want to do, that we want to carry forward. So it's a hands-on, as you can see here. Uh, it's hands-on, it's conceptual, and modeling and experimentation. Uh, that's the, the nature of, of the 3P event, and this is what 
uh, our team uh, was working on here. Out of this, you know, we've really forced uh, the, the group. We had 22 people in this uh, uh, group, uh, and we forced um, design ideas. We asked, broke it into four different teams and asked them to, to create a minimum of seven different design uh, I, uh, ideas to make this happen. And we all told them also to get out there and look at, for examples in nature uh, as, as a way to get out of what our normal everyday thinking uh, is and also find some opportunities to, uh, uh, to do so, such as this. I mean, nature has had millions of years uh, to solve problems, and most of nature's uh, solutions are fairly waste, uh, we're fairly waste free. So we can learn a lot from looking at that, and we can apply uh, apply these tools. So we forced uh, forced the group to really look and come up with different ideas. Well, out of the four groups, uh, we got them together and, and collectively had 17 different uh, design ideas. Uh, now I do know that four times seven is 28. We had some duplicates um, and such. And here's what you see here is this is highly conceptual. Uh, the design ideas were pictorial and, and such. And we had examples from nature. And each of the team, uh, each of the members of the teams uh, described and expressed how their design ideas would work using the customer interest and using the uh, uh, the targets that we had we selected three uh, three alternatives that fit the, the requirements as the best uh, and brought those forward and built models uh, accordingly we built three models uh, of that what you'll notice here is that you know there's some some differences uh, you know this one here is uh, was designed around a uh, uh, a cocoon and a spider web. Uh, we had some clamshell such, so we we've, we've had a number of different different thinking processes, and so we built the three, demonstrated it, and then selected one uh, to move to go forward. So this is what this cycle of learning, if you will, uh, kind of looked like. So we took uh, the, the design of what they did is they actually would take a design concept and then pull, pull various different ideas from other, other designs. And one of the things we wanted to test here is, uh, we wanted to test the concept is the current product uses a compressor. The compressor is loud. In fact, we measured it. It's somewhere around 185 to 100 dB. So consequently, uh, and of course, it comes on uh, intermittently, so we wanted to not have that in the room with the uh, with the product. So we looked at this: is how can we do this without a compressor? Can we may have a silent way of of uh, introducing pressure? And so they ran some tests and validated their concept here that they could use a bladder. And so they started build 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 a model here and demonstrate it. And this is where we got to our proposed uh, uh, proposed product. We had another version that uh, they ultimately named a you know, two-way uh, uh, chair design. It was a clamshell pressure. Uh, and uh, two-way as it was, you know, they kind of took it out of the massage chair uh, design there and then took um, and decided that, you know, you could sit either forward or, or backwards, if you will, in it. So they decided to call it a two-way chair design. So they created it and, and demonstrated, uh, just demonstrated the product. Did the same for the other one, which uh, they affectionately called the swing design. It was kind of a swing. It was really a, a unique uh, approach here. There was, no, uh, there was no mechanical or electrical um, uh, devices in here to cr create pressure. The concept was to have the uh, person's uh, body weight get in and create the pressure, and, uh, and because of the body weight creates the pressure, it would create pressure appropriate for the size of the person, self-adjusting, if you will. And so that they, had, they ran some tests on that to see is it feasible. They ran some tests on a small model, ran some tests on a, on a 
larger size uh, configuration, built the design, and then built it and demonstrated it. And so the prototype then, this is, this is where we went. So I would say that this is not too bad a job here for about five days of work. Two days of voice to the customer, three days of, uh, of, a, three, of a 3P event. So if we look at uh, uh, the tools we use, um, you might say, well, gee, uh, what, a, what does that uh, look like? Well, we really didn't use a whole lot of different tools. We use 3P, we use voice to the customer, and we use the A3 throughout, throughout this thing. But what I think we have to recognize here, it's not just the tools. The key really was the diversity of the backgrounds of the people and creating the open environment that they could work and have that interchange of ideas and such because that's where good ideas come from. Yeah. Is the, and I have an idea, and we have a dialogue about it, and, and some you have an idea, uh, and when we bring them together, you know, the interesting thing is, is that when two people get together, uh, each of them have an idea, we walk away with a third idea. So our lessons uh, learned, uh, uh, the folks, uh, uh, the folks, uh, the folks that participated put kind of put this together, and I kind of put affinitized them into three areas. The the, the first area was really uh, dealing with the focus of the of the activity in the first place, and they felt that what made this successful uh, for them was knowing the level that that they're that they're working at and keeping keeping it focused on the problem and that they felt that the A3 was was helpful to help them keep the focus on the goals and such uh, and understanding uh, what they're doing so focus is key the second is really the group dynamics and the team dynamics and the uh, composition of the group uh, what a number of folks said, you know, this is, this is really hard work and such, and having fun is really important because if we're having fun, people are engaged and the ideas flow and people have the freedom uh, to express their ideas without criticism for, for others. And then the other part that I thought was interesting is, uh, you know, they which you think, gee, why wouldn't, why would they actually want to need, feel the need to say this? And that is, when you don't know, don't be reluctant to pick up the phone and ask. Ask, you know, look at the internet, look at the phone, call suppliers, call customers, um, when when you need that, need the information. Don't wait until later. And finally. Uh, the third, you know, the third category was kind of dealing with around the design and, and the ideas and making sure the ideas get considered and that they don't get lost. And a lot of it goes with the um, uh, how the teams work and such, but uh, experimenting and, and learning from cardboard and wood models is 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 pretty cool. It's a cheap way to do it, and. So consequently, let's make sure that the designs are given a fair shake. Uh, don't, dis don't discount a design too early. So with that, uh, I'll kind of wrap up. Hopefully that gives us enough time for some questions here. Uh, if your questions are not uh, you know, addressed here and you, you want to get uh, some uh, input or have questions. Uh, my email address is here, uh, or my phone number is here. You can give me give me a call. I'll be happy to uh, to address them. Scott, do, uh, you want to take over here and look sure. at what you're Thank uh, you again for a very insightful uh, presentation. We appreciate it. Um, if anyone has any questions, if you could submit those now on the um, question panel, it would be great. And while you're um, while you're doing that, let me just tell you that our next webinar is scheduled for January 16th on Poll and Kanban Systems. And you can visit ame.org slash webinars for more information and to register. 
Here we have a question here. Does the net effect end up consuming more or less resources? Am I on? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I. Th I think. Uh, I think the net effect is that it consumes less resources. And I'll give you a, an example from my own experience. We had. Um, uh, a, I had in my previous company a uh, project that was presented, and it. The project that was presented was a, a new product which required a, an entirely new manufacturing. Uh, you know, process line in a clean room um, that we didn't have. And so they laid it out and they said this is a two-year project. Well, for our company, uh, a two-year two project and the amount of money that they, uh, that they were presenting uh, was, was not feasible. We were a leveraged buyout company, had limited capital. So we wanted to try, uh, we said, geez, this is, this is not going to, this is not going to fly. And so we took this process because I had experimented it earlier with another product, and so we took this project, uh, this project, and said, "Let's see if we can re readdress this project through this kind of process." And uh, uh, and the, the long, to make the long and short of it, was this: is that we went through the project, we completed the manufacturing, we completed the product, and we launched the product in half the time that was originally uh, said. And if we took the time that they had, the original project, by the time that original project was, um, you know, the original project plan had for launch, uh, which was 24, I think it was 26 months, uh, we looked out 26 months from the start uh, that we actually did, we had already captured about 20% market share on that. So the resources uh, applied, um, I think, were less in the long run, and the result and the results were were greater. So I don't think you're going to see uh, that it's going to consume more resources, but it does consume resources, attention, and focus. Did that answer your question? Hopefully. Ken, we had five more questions submitted while you were answering that one. The, the next one is, this looks like an effort focused on the design side of 3P. How would you change these thoughts to move into the production aspect of 3P? And could you provide an example? Uh, Yes, this is designed around the product product design, um, and this apply the three. First of all, three P applies to product, process, and facilities. If we were looking at a a facility um, or a process, what we would do uh, in that is it would be a little bit different. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> what we would do is we would do a uh, uh, a process map is first of all, and that would become our guide. And we would, you know, you, you're probably used to doing uh, future state process maps, and say this is what the process map would be, and what our desired uh, uh, performance of that line would be, and that would become our guide for design. We would then take the process, uh, and we'd find a, a uh, uh, an empty area in a building, and we would build uh, our model or models um, and demonstrate and simulate the process uh, unt until we got it to the point where our performance was meeting uh, meeting the targets. Okay. Not a whole lot different from the product, if you will, uh, in concept, but in actual physical uh, characteristics. Uh, we are building models. Uh, and we are demonstrating it, but we're demonstrating diff different different things. We're demonstrating the process, and we're doing it out of cardboard and wood and uh, and and such. Very good. Uh, the next question, Ken, is: What if you can't do hands-on builds of your three P designs during the event? Any other suggestions? Uh, 
Um, I, I guess uh, uh, it depends on what what you're what you're doing is uh, because the whole the whole concept of this is leveling the playing field, uh, and so I would recommend that you not avoid the hands-on build. Uh, if you're using CAD uh, and such, what you do is you isolate most of the players in the uh, in in the event. So I would say if you can't do hands-on build, um, you know, try to find a way to get hand, you know, some hands-on. It may be, uh, you know, doing, uh, you know, cutting out paper dolls or whatever. Uh, but in order to get people uh, to level the play field and get people uh, uh, involved in this, you, you need to make it so that people can, you know, touch it. I mean, we we are talking about products here or processes that are physical. Very good. You sort of touched on this, Ken, in your previous answer for an earlier question and in there, but this gentleman would like to know what process did you use for evaluating design concepts? The, the process that we used was, uh, um, and, I'm, and I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear, the process that we used is that we created an evaluation criteria based on the customer interests on this, um, in, in this process. So we had specific customer interests and the design targets. And so what the approach, if you're familiar with the uh, Pew uh, method of plus, minus, and equal, is we looked at the designs and said, okay, uh, how I got design one, design two, design three. If I look at, uh, if I have my uh, design one, I'm looking at uh, the characteristics here of a, of a known baseline, which is our squeeze machine, is design one better at this characteristic, equal to, or worse than? And so what we were looking at is driving to get as much uh, more pluses. And that's, that's because we had the squeeze machine as a, as, a, as a baseline. If I don't have a baseline, you have to use a little bit of uh, a different uh, evaluation method. And so we, you, you might use a, uh, a ranking scale and such. But in, in this case, we used a, a, a comparison to the squeeze machine. Very good. Next question. Does a team attempt to cap capture knowledge they had learned from the event for future product development? And if so, what format was this in? Uh, because we were, uh, 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 the format that we used was the knowledge briefs that I showed you and the A3, which, uh, uh, which we're following. Uh, which we're using. Those are the two tools that we use. We didn't get into, you know, mainly because we didn't have the time to get into uh, a lot more of the detail of the specific designs uh, there. And I would recommend you could use the same tools um, uh, for that. Very good. Next question. What are the three most important lean product development tools or techniques that you would use in 3P? Well, I, I think the it's it's um, I, I guess the most important first is is your voice to the customer, and you, you know creating the knowledge briefs out of that voice of the customer. And there's various different ways you can do that. I like the the simple uh, uh, the simple knowledge briefs that are there. There's others that like to use QFD uh, format, um, but I find that the QFD can get a little tedious and and uh, uh, and complex. Uh, like to keep things uh, simple and focused so that um, you know people that are not really schooled in design can participate. And such. So that's that's one. I guess the other is you know, visual modeling and simulation, if you will, uh, whether you're doing a process or a product uh, or such. But demo, you know, really doing uh, 
modeling and, de and demonstration and, and do it do it right you know right there visually uh, and such that's that, that's really uh, uh, really you know fairly key and I think the uh, I think the a3 is uh, beneficial to, to help keep you you focused uh, on on the project and do it do it at a level that's high enough that you can see the whole process. Now you can get into, you know, you can drive into using Microsoft Project Management and get down to the, you know, work, uh, uh, you know, your whole uh, work process and such, and you can get a lot of detail in your project plan. But the A3 is a good tool that keeps that keeps everyone on the same page of understanding, and it gives you a picture of the whole process. Two more questions. Um, we are on the East Coast. Any recommendations for 3P knowledge resources or benchmark opportunities in my area on the East Coast? Well, uh, uh, Alan Coletta uh, wrote a book. Um, Alan, uh, from, he's from Siemens. It's called uh, The Lean 3P Advantage. I would suggest that you uh, uh, pick that up. Uh, at AME, we've had 3P uh, workshops um, at all of our conferences. Uh, uh, Productivity Press has put on put on some. Um, Alan, actually, Alan uh, at at Siemens has hosted um, a 3P uh, uh, example. I've done a lot of work with them in their in their projects uh, um, to. Uh, you know, get them going. So you can, uh, I would say, first of all, pick up the book, and if if you would like to uh, get uh, an opportunity to to visit uh, visit Siemens, contact me, and I'll get a hold of Alan and see if we. Uh, I'm sure he would be willing to uh, to host a few. Uh, he's very open with it. Very good. The final question: Did you use LAMDA in your voice of the customer? You know, um, n not really. Um, uh, not on an overt way, if you will, but probably so because basically, uh, uh, what you're really doing is looking first uh, before you're uh, doing anything else and, and seeking understanding. Uh, in that in that process, uh, but generally I wasn't trying to uh, teach it, uh, folks uh, a different uh, a different tool from the PDCA um, uh, at that time. So consequently, I didn't go go into to Lambda, and uh, I'm not sure it's that was really necessary. Very good. Well, thank you, Ken, again, for a very insightful presentation and for uh, answering all the questions. And for those of you still on the line, please don't forget to fill out the short survey that will be in your inbox. And thank you, everyone, for attending. And this brings our webinar to a close. Have a productive day. All right. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you joining us.